Hi, I'm Hannah Gabby and I'm here to tell you the binary is bullshit. Sex typically refers to your biological traits, There's your gonads, your genitalia, your internal sex characteristics, your hormone production, hormone response, and secondary sex characteristics. Gender is about your identity, your expression, and it's often based on ideas about sex. It's important that we really break down what are we talking about when we talk about sex and gender, and is there something called biological sex, and what does that mean? This idea that the body is either male or female is totally wrong. And I am living proof of that. We know intersex people exist and break down this binary. We all have characteristics that are typically male and typically female. And it is really about political choices, social factors, ideological choices that we assign meaning to different parts of our body. So the meaning may be that the thing that most of us are taught, that if you have a vagina, you're a girl, or if you have a penis, you're a boy. But like many simple binaries break down when you start to really get into the nitty gritty. Over history, the location or the idea of what determined one's true sex shifted. A hundred years ago, it used to be whether or not you had ovaries or testes. Then it shifted to what kinds of chromosomes that you had. But the body doesn't just have one place where we can sit there with a microscope or something else and say, hey, wait a second, this is really who you are. This is your true sex. In fact, who you are is who you say you are. Intersex people are individuals born with varying degrees of sex characteristics that don't fit the typical script of what it means to be male or female. I identify as an intersex person. I identify as an intersex woman. And we're not that rare. It's 1.7% of the population is born like this. It's as common as people with green eyes and red heads. Everybody knows somebody, but it's sometimes hard for the person to speak about it or the person doesn't necessarily know it. I remember when I first learned about intersex and how surprising it was to me. I was like, what is this? Why have I never heard about this? And we haven't heard about it because it's actually been stigmatized for a long time. One thing a lot of people in the intersex community talk about are medically unnecessary surgeries that are forced upon intersex children to make them fit into these boxes uh, of male or female. I have gone through surgeries that have really stuck with me through my whole life and affected a lot of different parts of my life just so that I can fit into this box of female. It's possible to be both intersex and transgender, but it's really important to understand that they are not the same. It's more like a Venn diagram. While intersex people are often born with a mix of what science considers male and female biological characteristics, trans people are often born into a binary gender and then realize later in life that whatever their assigned gender was isn't how they actually want to live, isn't who they actually are. I was born with XY chromosomes and my gender at birth was female. We tend to think that chromosomes for women should only ever be XX, but there are women that have XY chromosomes. Chromosomes are not the sole determinant of your sex or your gender. When I say I'm a woman, I don't just mean that I identify as a woman. I mean that my biology is the biology of a woman, regardless of whether or not doctors agree. Saying that a person with XY chromosomes is only male is a narrow way to look at the diverse range of chromosome differences that we can have as a person. Human beings are so complex that each person has the right to define who they are and X and Y can't define who you are in your heart, in your mind, as you're growing in life. Too many people still believe that there's such a thing as a true sex and that it comes from your chromosomes. It's not the case. Science has known this for decades and it's actually a consensus in science and uncontroversial. Everybody has testosterone. It's just a matter of how your body responds to it. But it's also not just related to things that we think of as masculine. We actually need it for our liver, for our brain, for our heart. So it's really a misnomer to keep calling it the male sex hormone. Everybody has it, everybody needs it. It's not just about sex. In the sporting world today, some female athletes are even tested for high testosterone levels and forbidden from competition just based on their naturally occurring biology. There are women in elite sport that have 40 
36 XY chromosomes, but their bodies don't respond to the testosterone that they produce. No testosterone, their tissues can't use it, and yet they're excelling at elite athletes. So testosterone's not necessary to even be an elite athlete. And it's definitely not the only thing that makes people a good athlete. Definitely a cringeworthy misconception. It's like so steeped in what we've been taught culturally and as a society. Trans women are not biological men. We should never talk about any woman who is trans as a man. Not a biological man, not a natal man, not really a man. This is used to target trans women and make us out as predators, especially when it comes to bathroom bills. The reality is that a trans woman's biology is a female biology. It's the system that's causing friction to divide us as women and friction to divide feminists to feel like there has to be some separation or that my trans womanhood and your cisgender womanhood makes us in competition or one of us is trying to take up more space when the conversation should be we're all women. It's just my journey is a different journey. A trans woman is a woman. She's not tricking anyone. All of her body parts are female body parts. When you only focus on somebody's genitals, you're not seeing the full humanity and the wholeness of that person. Or acknowledging when it comes to gender identity and expression, really, really seeing that person for who they are. Much of the violence that we see against the trans community, particularly trans women and femmes of color, is fueled by this idea that trans women are really men. And that when someone learns that a person has a body part that they typically associate with men, or that a person was assigned male at birth, but is a woman Woman. And it's important that we really expose these efforts for what they are and fight back. And part of the way we can fight back is to show that these concepts aren't the fixed scientific constructions that people want to suggest.